It's been five months since Battle Beavers Customs launched their DualSense Custom Pro Builder and I finally got what it is that I ordered back in September. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the unboxing experience of this controller and then talk about some things that I did with my customization and the process that I went through. Right on top of the packaging, you're gonna see that I got this sweet Battle Beaver Custom sticker. I really like this. I'm gonna find somewhere to stick this. Uh, and then you get this card that has their uh, contact information, their website, their social media connections, and all that type of stuff. Next, you can see that all of the stuff that I customized with this controller, an actual individual went through this whole process and put my order together. I did make some changes in the whole process. Their customer service, if you just email them, have been fantastic. I will say that they were really responsive, even though it took them a little while to respond. They addressed every question that I had and all of the changes that I wanted to make with the controller that I initially ordered. They allowed me to make some changes to the aesthetics of it and all that type of stuff. So it's been a really nice experience working with their customer service. Here's everything uh, as far as like support and thanks for all the stuff. So here's my order sheet, I guess. And it looks like, a, like I said, a person went in and, and filled this out. And then I did opt for the remap on the back buttons that I included on my build. Um, these may differ uh, insofar as like how you execute a remap process. So I'm gonna go through the process on how you remap on my specific controller. But because Battle Beaver Customs allows you to really customize what it is you want in your order, um, this may differ from what it is that you receive. I didn't get a case with it. Um, let's see what came in the box. It looks like the controller's in there. And then you got some smooth beaver tail replacements. I'll show you what I have on my controller now, but it looks like they included some smooth ones in the packaging of this. And that's all you get in the box. Now onto the controller. It's in this nice foam protected during shipping. And holy crap, this controller looks absolutely phenomenal. Let's talk a little bit about the design of it. I went with the soft touch black on the face plates. The uh, soft touch mango on the directional share and um, uh, action buttons, as well as the soft touch mango on the touchpad. I went with the soft touch carbon fiber trim and I went with yellow thumbstick rings. Uh, hopping around towards the top, I went with soft touch mango on the L1 and R1 buttons. These aren't digital triggers and I went with soft touch black on the L2 and R2 buttons. These are digital clicks. On the back, it's just mango soft touch and the soft touch adds enough uh, texture to it to where I don't feel like this is gonna slip out of my hands. And I also went with four remappable back buttons in the standard and low positions. Um, and then that's pretty much the controller in a nutshell. Let's talk about the primary things that are awesome about this controller. First and foremost is the increased thumbstick tension. I would say that if you've never had it, I would stick with the middle ground and go with increased thumbstick tension and not extreme. If you're gonna go extreme, uh, it says that it gives guidance as so far as like having an extended or a longer um, thumbstick because it does take a little bit more pressure and uh, actual deliberateness in your movement. Another thing that you're gonna wanna note with the increased thumbstick tension is that it's a little bit harder to press um, you know, I go with bumper jumper, so this press is my jump, and that helps a lot with like not having to touch any of the face buttons because I remap one of my buttons back here to melee uh, because I primarily play first person shooter. So take note of that is that the increased thumbstick tension also increases the pressure that you're going to have to push down. So if I bring in an OEM uh, DualSense controller and try to show you on camera the differences in tension, it, that really doesn't communicate across video so well i just you just have to trust me in so far as like that this takes a lot more deliberateness in my movement and it, it is it feels awesome i absolutely love this increased thumbstick tension it feels like it's a much more substantial thumbstick than it is on the actual dual sense because this is like you know kind of flimsy it's not too bad but it's it's flimsy in comparison to what is required on the, the Battle Beaver controller. So with that, outside of the actual aesthetics of the controller, the next things that I wanna talk uh, briefly about is the digital tap triggers on the L2 and R2. These are the best in the business. There is no doubt about that. Like these feel the best. They actually have a really nice tactile feel to them. There's no mushiness across the way. You know, there's no like play. It's just straight up and down actual mouse clicks. That's not to say that or take that anything away from other uh, competitors or manufacturers of custom DualSense controllers, but uh, Battle Beaver does it the best. 
no doubt about it. One thing you're gonna wanna take note of and probably maybe save some cost on if you don't primarily play first person shooters, if you play sports games or fighting games or something like that, PlayStation 5 games um, are going to take advantage of the adapter trigger that are built into uh, the DualSense controller. And that gives the capability of kind of taking action or making uh, gra gradual movements or something like that. And if you play any kind of like racing games or anything like that, um, this is uh, what you want. Um, I primarily play first person shooters, so I want the quick reaction speed with this. Um, with the DualSense though, uh, if you remove the adaptive triggers, you lose all of that capability. So just keep in mind that if you want to play other games, then uh, other games that are not first person shooter, uh, kind of skip on the uh, digital triggers. I really love these digital triggers and they feel great and they add a lot to my reaction speed in first person shooters. But I will say that it is difficult to drive or maneuver around in say Warzone, for example, and driving cars because it's zero or a hundred, you know, it's full pedal to the gas or not. I can't make gradual decisions on uh, my triggers. So just keep that in mind in your purchase decision. So now on to why you would actually want a Battle Beaver controller. The ability to customize or uh, kind of put the layout of buttons in any way, shape or form on the back of the controller. They are the only ones that I know of that do this. I have um, built in the standard and low positions. Uh, I just went with their default selector, but you could actually get a DualSense controller, mark it up, send it in, and have them customize it for you for your comfort or for your accuracy or whatever you want or however you want these placed. One thing that I will say is that these are, there's a little bit of play in them because of the way that you put them in your hand, and that's a really nice touch. They also have quiet um, actuators in these. You can select that for an additional cost. I just went with the, the standard clickiness because I don't stream, but I could see that if you were a streamer and this clickiness, you know, it could come across on camera or during your streams and it may annoy your audience. So if you wanted to kind of quiet these down, that is a, a possibility. I also went with the beaver tail um, selection because it gives a little bit more grip to it. Uh, they do include, like I showed you in the unboxing, these smooth uh, tips for the back buttons so you can swap them out. Because these tips are removable, it just takes a little bit of pressure to pull them off. They're, they're just held in place with some standard tension. You put them back on, click them back in place, and they hold in place really nicely. It's not too hard to take them off, so don't put too much thought to it. Talk about some things that I noticed in my initial impressions of this controller. If you have the DualSense charging station, this thing will fit and is compatible with it. So if you take this thing and utilize the bottom portion of the DualSense controller and place it on here, it will charge that your controller no problem. Because of its design, it's based off a, a standard OEM. If you were to take something like, say, uh, an AIM controller, uh, it doesn't fit in and it will never, it's not compatible because of the back casing of this is not the, the standard OEM and it doesn't, it is not compatible with the uh, DualSense charging station nor is something like uh, Hex Gaming's because of the actual module. The back plate is still the same but if you try to place this in there it doesn't, it doesn't fit and it's not compatible like that of the standard OEM um, actual DualSense controller. So that's a nice touch. One thing that I r wish that they did is, you know, put the Battle Beavers Customs uh, logo here uh, as they do on their Dual Shock controllers because I have their uh, Quick Build or the Quick Pick controller here and they have since changed their logo since I ordered this. If you wanna see a video on this, there'll be a card here if you wanna check that out. This is uh, one of the best Quick Pick controllers that you could possibly get insofar as just having uh, accessibility to uh, two buttons that are you know, already kind of preset with no remap uh, capability and digital triggers and bumpers. This controller has served me well and I really, really like this controller. I wish that they would have gone a little bit further and given us the button access here and kind of thrown their logo on it because I mean you could tell that this was a Battle Beaver Customs controller uh, just by looking at it or without me having told you that. So um, that's something that I, I wish that they would have included. Okay so let me talk to you a little bit about back button placement. If you want some recommendations uh, from me in building your custom uh, DualSense controller with Battle Beaver. 
These two buttons up here are in the standard position and these two are in the low position. I will say right off the bat and using this controller for a little bit, I would like to close the gap between these two and maybe move this lower one up a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of a learning curve in having these button actuators like this, especially if you use a paddle system on any other of the manufacturers out there like AIM controllers or Hex Gaming or Scuff. Um, but they fall nicely and if I were to put my hands on this, um, this standard controller, every finger fits nicely on all of these back buttons and I don't have any problem in actuating the triggers and uh, bumpers or anything like that and having full access to these. It's just a lot of um, uh, knowing how to use each one of these fingers instead of, you know, pushing your thumbs on the, the, the freaking face buttons. Uh, like I said, if I were to build this again, I would probably put these in a higher position next time to the standard. I really love the standard placement on the DualSense. They fit nicely, but I would like to have the low ones up just a little bit. Also wanted to talk to you a little bit about how Battle Beaver designed these back buttons for longevity and usage, you know, heavy usage. Uh, there's a little bit of play in each one of the buttons and you can actuate it by just pushing one corner like that. And even on the inside here, you can push it and it'll actuate. I think they accounted for people pulling towards them as they actuate it. So if you look at my ring finger here, um, I'm actuating the button pulling towards or inward to the controller. Cause I mean, you squeeze when you, you kind of press these buttons and that's a nice touch. I think that's going to hold up well over time. So if we sit quietly for a minute, I'm going to give you a sample of the back button actuations. Um, and then you can make a, an educated decision if you want to go with the quiet actuators or not just, you know, go with these standard ones like I have here. So as I actuate them, It's not super loud, but if you are in a really tight space and stream a lot, that that's gonna come up over your, your microphone and it, your audiences. They may be annoyed by it or not. Uh, just, just so you know, if you wanna go with the quiet ones uh, and you stream a lot, or you're gonna use this for streaming, that's probably a decision I would make is just go with the quiet membranes. There's also an inconsistent click with the back buttons. So if you pull toward you, it doesn't click as loud versus if you push it direct, push down directly. It's a lot louder than if you kind of just pull on the trigger or pull on these button actuations. So now I'm gonna walk you through the remap process on this specific controller. Uh, just so you know, your remap process may vary because of your custom build. And if you went with just one button, the process will be different. Just know that Battle Beaver will make you aware on remapping your controller and how it is you go about it. So with that said, I'm gonna walk you through the process on how I remap this one. Another thing to note is that you can remap any of the face buttons, the D-pad buttons, L1, R1, L2, R2, uh, R3, and L3. All can be remapped to uh, actuations on the back of this controller. So there's really no limitations on what it is or how it is you can remap this thing. I went with all of the face buttons on the back, so just that's just what I do. Anyways, let's go through that process now. On this specific controller, Battle Beaver has designed it to where you hold the uppermost two back buttons and push the mute button. So I press them and then I press the mute button. That enables um, my ability to restart the remap process. Then from there, I press the whatever back button that I want. So from there, I press the button that I want to remap. So I press, I'm gonna remap this one. I'm gonna press it, press this one. Then I'm gonna wait for the button to kind of blink. You can see the mute button kind of flashing quickly. Then I'm gonna release the back button and then release that one. And that has successfully been remapped to that one. And you just repeat that process on any of the buttons that you wanna remap. And then with that, you just press this mute button again and it has recorded that actual remap to the back of this, this little button back here. And that's, that's pretty much it. It's a really simple process, super quick and can be done easily on the fly. That's probably the easiest remap process on any of the controllers that I've had any experience with. With remapping four back inputs on any of the custom controllers available out there now, Battle Beaver by far, bar none, has the best, easiest remap process of any of them. You know, they take advantage of that mute button that's available and then they put it into the, the remap process and I really, really like that. So what are my initial thoughts on this whole purchase experience and what I think of Battle Beaver Customs uh, DualSense controller? I will say that this controller feels like what it cost 
and you put it in your hand, it feels absolutely premium. There's no creakiness or anything like that. It looks like it's gone through a testing process of quality assurance and the order that you ship to you, that they ship to you is been built immaculately. Now with that said, I am a little bit bummed on their warranty. Uh, you have to pay a, a quite a bit for a 120 day warranty and it initially comes with a 30 day warranty and that is probably the weakest availability of any of the custom controller builders out there and it's very, very limited. I don't like that because of the experience that you are presented with. I feel like it should be more. Anyways, that it is what it is. It's 30 days with, and you wanna pay a little bit more. It's 120 days and that's it. Outside of that, I really like the increased thumbstick tensions, but I can see that a lot of folks will not like that. Uh, it takes a little bit get, getting used to and with the press of them, it takes much more pressure than it does on like an OEM thumbstick. So if I were to offer any suggestions, it's probably maybe pass on that and just get regular thumbsticks. Um, I want increased thumbstick on tension on all of my controllers because I, <laughs> this is amazing. Outside of the warranty issue with this thing, I have no complaints. The cost is comparable. The quality and everything that they put into this controller is absolutely phenomenal. And I have, I have no complaints outside of the warranty. I really love this controller and have enjoyed my short usage of it over the past 48 hours. It is absolutely phenomenal, folks, and you will not be disappointed, especially with the, the price that you pay. But with that said, you can customize everything on this thing. The, the back button placement in and of itself is probably the, the only offering that's out there. Correct me if I'm wrong and down in the comments, I, I know I probably am, but with Battle Weaver Customs, you can put four inputs on one side or three on one and one, or just have one or, and then you can go with like uh, touchpad buttons if you play claw and want to actuate another button there. There's just uh, an infinite amount of customizability to Battle Beaver Customs controllers. Before I close, I have nothing to disclose. I purchased this thing with my own money and I don't, I'm not affiliated with Battle Beaver or anything, but I will leave them linked in the description. Full disclosure, there are some links down there that are my affiliate, but the one that I'm sending you over to Battle Beaver is not. So I don't get anything from it. It's just directing you to the builder that I use to construct this thing. Uh, with that said, if you're interested in a full review of this thing, give me some time because I wanna put it through its paces. I also wanted to go beyond the warranty and tell you if it holds up, if I start experiencing any, any stick drift or anything like that with these increased thumbstick tension uh, capabilities that I put on both of them. I'll save that for my full review uh, and my long-term review of, of a controller. I gotta put it through its uses, folks, because with that, without that, I mean, it's really not worth anything. And I'm also gonna spend some time in comparing it to other, you know, main manufacturers and stuff like that. So uh, make sure you subscribe. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thank you for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas, and I will catch you in the next one.